St. Joseph Parish on this, the second Sunday of Advent. Today, the Gospel invites us to become, like St. John the Baptist, heralds of good tidings. Let us prepare a straight path into our hearts for God, then go forth and invite others to do likewise. Our entrance hymn is number 38, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, number 38. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. We begin our prayer. We ask for God's mercy and God's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. And may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The children would come forth. This Sunday we have a special event for the children and parents can pick them up after Mass in the basement. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. 
a voice cries out, In the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom, and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise, as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, 
not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar, and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be? Conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locust and wild honey, and this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. John the Baptist appeared in the desert proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. Advent starts with John the Baptist for the forgiveness of sins, baptizing for the forgiveness of sins. And Easter ends with the risen Jesus giving us the sacrament of reconciliation for the forgiveness of our sins. When he said to his apostles and gave them, he gave them the Holy Spirit 
He told them, whose sins you shall forgive are forgiven them. What a glorious sacrament. Now this coming Wednesday at 10 a.m., fathers lined up five priests to be here. Now the school children will all be coming over, but you are all invited to come to the sacrament of reconciliation. And you get to cut in front of the line. You're invited because you are preparing yourself during this Advent season. You know, it's not without reason that as we begin the church year, getting ready for the coming of our Savior, and at the end of the Easter season, the church talks both times about the forgiveness of sins. Jesus on the cross, forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. Forgiveness forgiveness waiting for Christ as a youth, as an infant, and his second coming. It's kind of like bookends of our faith. Forgiveness. Now, we all want forgiveness because we all have done some stupid things in our lives, and we need it. You know, at the beginning of the Mass, we said the uh, penitential rite, the confidior. And in there, we say, please forgive us, because we've sinned in our thoughts and in our words, in what we have done and what we have failed to do. We all want forgiveness. We want God's mercy and his forgiveness. And yet, oddly, and maybe even disturbingly, if you look at Jesus' teaching throughout the scriptures, forgiveness for us kind of depends on our forgiveness of others. You know, there are over 25 scripture passages in the Bible talking about reconciliation and forgiveness. Jesus says when we bring our gifts to the altar, if it's to mean anything, we must first go and be reconciled with one another. You all remember the passage about the splinter and the beam? When he was asked, how do we pray? One of the lines that he gave us when we ask Father to forgive us our sins as we forgive the sins of others. Forgiveness is a big deal. There was a time in my life when I, 25 years ago or so, when I had things coming at me from all sides And I was really struggling with forgiving, really struggling with forgiving. Now, I went to a counselor, and we spent hours talking about this, helping me work through it. And this morning, I'm going to share with you some of the things that we put together to help forgiving. And I'm going to call it the Ten Commandments of Forgiving. Now, these are not like those commandments that Moses brought down from the mountainside. They're not etched in stone. You will not, nor do you have to, remember them all. But perhaps, just perhaps this morning, one of them may strike a chord with you and help you in forgiving. The first commandment, forgiving is not easy. There is no quick fix. Now, I'm sure all of you can remember if you have siblings, your older sibling or maybe a playmate smacked you on the playground, and all of a sudden mom comes running out of the house and she says, you, you tell him you're sorry. I'm sorry. Not really. Yeah, right. It's hard to forgive when you know that there's really no meaning behind it. 
It doesn't mean a thing if it's so quick and easy, it's just not real. Especially when we get older. And the sins and betrayals get a little bit larger and bigger. We're going to face them all our life. So we need to ask God for his help. Ask him to help us to start the process of forgiving. The first commandment of forgiveness is it's not easy. It takes time. The second commandment, forgiveness, is not forgetting. How often have you heard somebody say, oh, forgive and forget? I don't think so. Forgiveness is about a change in heart, not just a bad memory. Now, we don't want forgiveness to fester inside of us. We have to let it go. But it is not about forgetting, because it is really helpful to remember the point from which you have to move on. The third commandment, forgiveness, does not overlook the evil. Okay, so sometimes we hear, let's just pretend that didn't happen. That doesn't work. It doesn't mean that we have to accept the injustice or naively believe that all is well when it really isn't. Because forgiveness is not denial. Because we can't overlook what was done. The fourth commandment is forgiveness is not indifference. Now what that means is where things are harmful or wrong, we can't just go back as business as usual. Let the damage go and the hurt go on. You've got to call them on it. Forgiveness is not indifference to the situation, but you should do whatever you can to make sure that it doesn't happen again. The fifth commandment is forgiveness is not approval. We can be forgiving, but at the same time, we can express our disapproval about the harmful behavior. If it's wrong, say it's wrong. Okay, so there are the first five. Forgiveness is not easy. It's not forgetting. It does not overlook the evil. Forgiveness is not indifference. And it's not the same as approval. Now those are all, but it's not. The next five are a bit more positive and can really help in the forgiving. <coughs> the sixth commandment. Forgiveness is based on recognizing and admitting that people are always bigger than their faults. We don't define somebody and who they are by something that they said or the way in which they hurt us. They're bigger than that. Forgiveness is based on recognizing and admitting that people are always bigger and more than the faults and their mistakes. It's our job to look for the good in people. The seventh commandment, forgiveness, is willing to allow a person who has offended us to start over again. Well, I know you've all heard this, and it's so much easier to say, I never want to let that happen again. I'm never going to have anything to do with him or her. Forgiveness means letting go. It means allowing the person to start over again. What did Jesus say to Peter? Seven times 70? The Eighth Commandment, forgiveness recognizes the humanity of the person who has wronged us. And it also recognizes our own humanity and our own shortcomings and our own contributions to what went wrong. Every action has a two-way street. The ninth commandment, forgiveness surrenders the right to get even. I'll get you back. 
someday you'll be sorry. It's payback time. Forgiveness means to let go of that and embrace our Christian truth that forgiveness surrenders the right to get even. And finally, the Tenth Commandment, and this is the biggest hurdle. Forgiveness means we wish the person who hurt us or the group that hurt us, we wish them well. That's a tough one. But it's basically the basis of all forgiveness. We have to let God be God, the final judge. We need to wish them well and we offer them to God's mercy and his judgment. So there are the ten. The Ten Commandments of Forgiveness. Forgiveness is not easy. Forgiveness is not forgetting. Forgiveness does not overlook the evil. Forgiveness is not indifference. Forgiveness is not the same thing as approval. Forgiveness recognizes the people are always bigger than their faults. Forgiveness allows a person to start over again. Forgiveness recognizes the humanity of the wrongdoer. Forgiveness surrenders the right to get even. And forgiveness wishes the offender well. Now, as I said at the beginning, you aren't going to remember all ten, and there's no need to. But maybe one, just one, struck a chord with you and can help you learn to forgive. God our Father, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We raise our prayers and our petitions we ask God to hear us. For our Holy Father and all pastors, that they be true shepherds of God's flock, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For local and national leaders in every country, that they have the courage to help build a just world, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Ava Rose Ernst, who is being baptized this morning after Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for an increase in vocations to priesthood and consecrated life, that more young men and women have the courage to follow a call from God to serve in the church. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful, as we journey through Advent, that it may be a time of renewal and blessing as we open our hearts to the continuing presence of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the people of our parishes and those who are being remembered in this Mass who have died, Merle Birkin and Mark Henley, that they may know the fulfillment of God's promise of eternal life and everlasting joy. And for Mary Carol Moosman's, whose funeral was yesterday, and for Dee Ernst, who died last night. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear our prayers. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song for the preparation of the gifts is number 63, Ready the Way. Number 63. Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my gifts and yours will be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifices of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merit to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang him his coming and proclaimed his presence. It is by his gift that he already we can rejoice at the mystery of the Nativity, so that he, he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in praise. And so with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, with all the hosts of heaven, we acclaim. You bless us, Almighty Father, through the Son, Jesus Christ, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves are turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, for whose sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we ask you to sanctify these gifts by the pouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, at whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving thanks, he said the blessing, he broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands and, confessing your mercy, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed upon us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with the very Spirit who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity, and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop and all the bishops and the entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her husband, the blessed apostles and all the saints, our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity, a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With you. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our song for communion will be number 41, Waiting in Silence, number 4-1.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Before the final song is announced, uh, you're all invited downstairs for the Christmas fair, and I want you to introduce want to introduce to you uh, Nicholas, who couldn't come on Wednesday, but he's here today. So he'll be downstairs with the children, and any of you can sit on his lap, too. <laughs> Our closing hymn is number 576, Soon and Very Soon, number 576. <laughs>